Hi, boys and girls in my class, boys and girls other classes. Um, my name is Miss Connolly. I know that we're in a unique situation where everyone's trying to learn from home. So I'm gonna make these math videos for students and you can share with any of your friends. Everyone deserves to learn. Um, I'm also making them for parents because parents, you never get to see how we learn math these days. So I know it's difficult when you're helping your student at home. So this is to help students in my class particularly get their work done um, while we're in this situation. And also for anyone who wants to help their kids out, you can try some problems once you learn, give them to them. Um, share with your friends. We want to make sure every kid gets to keep learning while we're here at home. Um, and if we use these videos after, that would be great. Um, parents can help with their homework and things like that. So today we are going to start with multiplying a whole number by a fraction. Um, this is technically taught in fourth grade. So I'm going to remind, um, I teach fifth grade, but I'll, I can do questions for all grades. Um, I'm going to remind students what they learned in fourth grade. Parents, I'm going to help you understand what in the world is going on when you see everything. Um, we are going to start with relatively low um, whole numbers, meaning whole numbers probably less than 10 today. Um, when we get to larger whole numbers, there's a whole different strategy. So I just want to show you what the kids are learning for this. So let's start with a really important thing that I need all students and all parents to understand is that whenever we're multiplying with um, whole or sorry with fractions, we want to think about what do we know about whole numbers that is going to help us. Okay, so there's some similarities and differences between multiplying with whole numbers and multiplying whole number by fraction, fraction by fraction. We always want to be thinking about what is the same and what's different. So let me show you what you know about whole numbers. I'm going to start with four times three. Um, if you're not in my class or you haven't learned this, I'm going to um, let you know something really important. Four times three really means four groups of three. Okay, so we have our multiplication symbol standing for groups of. That's going to be really important when we get to multiplying fraction times fraction. I need us to understand that we're thinking about this as groups of, and then later on we'll be thinking it as parts of. So this word of is really important. So a lot of us have memorized our facts. We know that four times three is 12, but what, how do we even get there? I'm gonna tell you. Um, four times three is, means four groups of three, which means three plus three plus three plus three. Three, six, nine, 12. So what we're seeing here is that multiplication is actually repeated addition. So we repeat the number that we're adding, we do it this many times, and then you see the four groups of three. Okay, and that's how we end up with 12. That's how you know that math fact. So what we want to think about is how is this related to the multiplying a whole number by a fraction? Okay, so we're going to get right into it now. I'm going to stick with the four here. And we're going to be thinking about four groups of two-thirds, four groups, groups of two-thirds, okay? And what's awesome is that we can use the same exact strategy to solve. So what does four groups of two-thirds look like? It looks like repeated addition. Two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. I think I said that the right amount of times. Um, and what's so important for kids to remember, you've learned about the addition of fractions. When we are adding fractions, we are adding the same size pieces, which is our denominator here. They're all thirds, they're all the same size pieces. So we are not changing the denominator when we add two thirds plus two thirds. The denominator stays the same. There'll be a whole lesson about adding and subtracting fractions. So stay tuned on the YouTube channel. So. Like I said, the denominator is going to stay the same. We're not changing that. So two thirds plus two thirds is four thirds, plus two thirds is six thirds, plus two thirds is eight thirds. So we end up with eight thirds. Now parents, I know this is an improper fraction. It feels uncomfortable to just leave it that way right now. At the end, we're going to go over changing it to a mixed number, but there's something I want kids to notice. Um, is happening when we're multiplying a whole number by a fraction. So we're going to leave it there for now, okay? And like I said, stay tuned till the end and we'll go over how the students learn 
how to change an improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay? All right, so four groups of two thirds, you see it here. Next, we're going to think about five groups of three eighths. And parents, I know that you start to see this number line popping up everywhere, so I'm going to illustrate that for you here um, in case you're wondering what in the world is going on. So, in order to show four groups of three eighths, we are going to have to add three eighths five times. Important on the number line? You're starting at zero when you're doing this strategy. Okay? So, zero plus three eighths is three eighths. Some kids are going to want to start with three eighths, but we're really thinking about the first time we add three eighths, we get to three eighths. So zero plus three eighths is three eighths. Again, stick with me as we get going here because I'm going to be writing them as improper fractions. So three eighths plus three eighths is six eighths. You write what you land on down here. I'm labeling my jumps as I go. Every time my jump represents adding three eighths. Six eighths plus three eighths is nine eighths plus three eighths is 12 eighths. And I've added one, two, three, four times, so I need to do it one more time, plus three eighths. And we end at 15 eighths. So don't worry, we're gonna come back to that improper fraction, but again, I want students to be noticing something. Okay, so that's that on the number line. And then the last example we're gonna do to remind students how to multiply a um, whole number times a fraction. We're going to do three times three ninths. So that's the same as three ninths plus three ninths plus three ninths. Super big reminder, your denominator is not changing when we're adding the same size pieces. They're already the same size, so we keep them the same. Um, so we have three ninths plus three ninths is six ninths plus three ninths is nine ninths. Another thing that looks a little uncomfortable to write down. Sorry, that doesn't look like an equal sign. All right, so we have three examples up here of how we were going to multiply a whole number times a fraction, okay? Um, I want you to think about what you notice, and you can pause it if you want, talk to your parents about it. If you're watching me in my class and laughing with a friend, pause it, both of you, and talk about what do you notice is the same in all three situations. Did you think about it? All right, so I'm hoping, parents and students, that you noticed that the denominator stayed the same in every situation. That's because we're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, which is the same as repeated addition, and when we add fractions, the denominator does not change, okay? And there's something else that I want you to notice. Maybe I'll grab a different color to um, highlight a little bit. I want you to think about your whole number. So we talked about the denominator staying, staying the same. I want you to think about what's happening here. Sorry, this is like a couple days of lessons jammed into one. So you might be noticing that four groups of two is eight. So we have four groups of two thirds is eight thirds is the same as, that's what the equal sign stands for. Um, five groups of three eighths, five times three is 15 eighths. And three groups of three ninths is nine ninths, three groups of three is nine. Okay, so that's really important that you start to notice that. Um, if you already know about multiplying fraction by fraction and you generated a rule with me in my classroom, um, we know that um, the rule for multiplying fractions is numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. But you don't see a denominator here. So that's something that we learned because three divided by one is three. The fraction bar represents division. Um, and three wholes is the same as three. So now we have three times three, numerator times numerator, and then we have denominator times denominator. Parents, we don't go there right away, right away um, because we need students really thinking about what does three groups of three ninths mean? It means we're adding three ninths three times, okay? Once they start to pick up on the whole number times the numerator, 
um, because the denominator doesn't change when we're adding, then it starts to move a little bit quicker. But I'm sure that your student's parent requires a representation. Um, the number line is a popular one. The area model, um, I'm not gonna go there right now, but the area model is another popular one where they, um, well, I'll just, I'll do four groups of two thirds. So they might do two thirds plus two thirds. Oh, don't, don't do that. Um, my holes should be the same size. I'm just kind of trying to go fast because that's not the point of the lesson, but you'll see the eight thirds here. Okay, so you might see your kid drawing that, that's fine. They're making sense of what does four groups of two thirds mean. All right, so that is multiplying a whole number times a fraction. Um, and I'm gonna talk about these improper fractions um, and turning them to mixed numbers so parents that you understand how your child learned. Um, let's get started. We're gonna do four groups of uh, two thirds is the same as eight thirds. So eight, thirds. When your numerator is greater than your denominator, the um, you have an improper fraction, it's greater than one whole. In this case, um, and in many cases, it's greater than two holes, so it could be greater than three holes, could be greater than a hundred holes, you just got to make sense of it. So parents, the way that you might have learned this is eight divided by three, um, and then you think about what is eight divided by three, and it's not perfect. So you might say, I know that um, three goes into eight two times, because three times two is six, and then you might say you have two thirds left over. Um, kids didn't learn it like that right away. I'm gonna show you how they learned it, all right? So, important thing that I need everyone to understand is that when we're talking about thirds, and I wanna take one whole, I need to shade in all three thirds. So when we think about what is one whole, when we're talking about thirds, the numerator and the denominator are the same, that's the same as one whole. Okay, so you're gonna see your student thinking about things like this. So they're gonna ask themselves, how many wholes are in eight thirds? And what they're going to do is they're going to decompose the fraction. They're going to break it down. They're going to make, um, they're going to use addition to see what's going on. So let me show you. So they'll think, okay, I have one group of three thirds, definitely. In their brain, they're thinking, I have five thirds left that I can still split up. So is there another group of three thirds? Yes. Okay. So, so far they have three thirds plus three thirds, which is six thirds and they ask themselves, what else can I add here to get to eight? Again, denominator not changing. What else can I add here to get to eight? And then they'll see two thirds. Okay, so what, what does this mean? What are they thinking? They think they, this is what they're thinking. They know one whole plus one whole, three thirds is a whole, three thirds is a whole, plus two thirds. And so they're ending up with the same thing. Lost my eraser. That always happens if you're in my class, you know. What, they're think what they end up with is the same thing you did. One plus one is two. Two plus two thirds is two and two thirds. Okay, so let me erase this. That is what we would do with eight thirds. Um, the other answer that we had was 15 eighths. So when we're thinking about eighths, um, when we want to think about a whole with eighths, you would have to shade in eight eighths. And that makes one whole. So something you should all be recognizing is when the numerator and denominator is the same, that is always one whole. That's a conjecture we learned in our class. Um, make sure you pay attention to that. So what they're going to do is they're going to think how many groups of eight eighths go into 15 eighths. So they're going to take out their one group of eight eighths and say, hmm, what is left over that I would add? And because we know about addition and subtraction and how they're related, we're able to come up with this. So what did they get? They get one whole and seven eighths. Okay. The last problem that we had, our um, product was nine ninths. Um, so again, the a thing I really want to point out when we're talking about improper fractions to mixed numbers is when the numerator and denominator are the same, you have exactly one whole. Okay, 
So what did we learn today? We learned that multiplication of whole numbers is repeated addition. So when we have a fraction times a whole number, we can use repeated addition there. So it's really cool. We think about what we know about whole numbers. We think about, is it the same as fractions? Is it different? Um, there are similarities. There's definitely differences. Stay tuned for that. And that's what we do. Okay. The last thing that I want to make sure that I explain before I send you off to do your work is story problems. Okay. So I just want to give you an example of what a story problem might look like in this situation. Okay. So Jana, shout out to you, Jana. Jana ran two thirds of a mile every day. She did this for five days. How many miles did she run? Total. So we want to think about that group sub. We have five days. She did two thirds every day, five groups of two thirds. Um, and if you were paying attention, you know that we are thinking about five groups of two thirds. Our denominator is gonna stay the same. It's repeated addition, two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds. Plus two -thirds. Um, it's gonna get us to 10 thirds. Um, when we think about 10 thirds, this is just a little review wrap up. We know we can do three thirds plus three thirds is six thirds, plus three thirds is nine thirds, and I have one left over, one third left over. So therefore we get three and one third. One, two, three holes, one third. So Jana ran three and one third miles total. Um, and that's what a story problem might look like in this situation. Explore more story problems. Try it out. Um, if you have any questions, you can um, email me if you have my email. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to students and parents alike. Um, see if you want to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get um, everyone learning math. And um, parents, hopefully it's a break when your students are watching this and they're able to work on some of their work. Thank you.